Hi, everybody. This is Susan Sandvik, um, and I will be teaching the webinar. We will begin in just a couple of minutes. Please let me know if you're having any problems seeing my screen. It should be a screen that says last minute tips for Giving Tuesday. Okay, everyone. Um, once again, this is Susan Zambic, and I'm just going to give it just a couple minutes. I see a bunch of stragglers are coming in rapidly, so I'm just giving everybody a couple minutes, but hopefully you're able to see my screen. It should say last minute tips for giving Tuesday on your screen, and I will start in just a couple. Okay, it looks like the participants have slowed down a bit. So I will get started because I know your time is very precious, especially at this year end giving time. Um, so welcome. Welcome to Last Minute Tips for Giving Tuesday. I am Susan Sandvik. I am a new community development specialist here at Mighty Cause, but I come with 20 years plus uh, experience uh, with um, fundraising, it, everything from tiny, tiny, small startup nonprofits who would love to just be able to make $500 during Giving Tuesday to big, huge national um, nonprofits who are looking to raise, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on Giving Tuesday. So i I've done it all, and so hopefully I can be a great resource for you. And um, and of course, I know Mighty Cause will be a tremendous resource for you all. All right. So throughout this campaign, I mean, throughout this webinar, we are going to go through six easy steps to plan a year campaign. So the basic things we're going to cover today are how to register, how to get your organization page ready, how to use the resources that Mighty Cause has, how to schedule content ahead of time so that way you um, are prepared for when the day arrives, how to set up your actual giving day action plan, and how to follow up after your, your giving day. So let's go over the Giving Tuesday basics. Um, Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause is a 27-hour fundraising event. It begins at midnight Eastern Standard Time. It ends at midnight Pacific Standard Time. And you are welcome to say, if you have a local event, that it's a 24-hour event just for your specific uh, time zone. Um, 
On Mighty Cause, we have a, a nonprofit toolkit, which you must have found because you're taking this class, but we have a toolkit that is full of templates, checklists, planning timelines, um, webinars, um, um, all sorts of great information that can help you either inspire our, uh, our seasoned veterans of Giving Tuesday, or um, if you're brand new to Giving Tuesday, it can help you set up your entire campaign. So definitely check it out. And, um, and register today um, for Giving Tuesday with Mighty Cause. And you have the link right here, givingtuesday.mightycause.com. It's really quick and easy to register. Um, um, People will be able to give early um, if they can start giving on November 15th. And um, and then the important day to mark on your calendar is November 29th, which is Giving Tuesday. Oh, one uh, quick, <laughs> quick bookkeeping thing. I'm still new here, so I'm going, <laughs> you have to give me a little grace. Um, I will be having um, a Q&A at the end of our session. So if you go to the Q&A section of um, your Zoom taskbar, um, enter in your questions there and I will get to them at the end of this class. Um, I just know myself and I know that um, responding to chat while I'm trying to teach a webinar is a little much for, for my brain. So um, so just put your questions in the Q&A and I will definitely, we'll have a Q&A section at the end of class. Thanks everybody so much. All right. So as I said, we're going to go through six easy steps. So step one, register. Um, where to register? Just go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com, click register now, and registering is easy. It is free, and it literally only takes a moment of your time, especially if you've used our platform before for other purposes. Um, registration facts. If you are an admin, Mighty Cause will pull the information from your account. So, like I said, if you've done, if you worked with us before, it will be especially easy. You can select your organization by searching your uh, the name of your nonprofit or your EIN. As you can see here, it's American Red Cross. The EIN is the Denver one, and that's how we can kind of make sure that we're picking the correct one um, organization that you want this fundraising page to be associated with. Um, when you register, you must complete the form and complete four items on um, your to-do list in order to fully register for your page. And it's really simple. You need your logo and your banner. So you need to get two images ready to upload into your page. You want to edit your story, and then you want to make sure that your thank you page is, is edited to meet um, your organization's needs. Um, step two, let's get your organization page ready. All right. So when you are, um, once you have your page up and ready, you have some essential um, must-do items, but you also, um, this is a great opportunity to kind of change everything on your giving page to kind of meet Giving Tuesday as well as your end-of-year fundraising needs. So um, so as I said, you want to add your logo, you want to add your background image, and you're going to edit your thank you page, you want to edit um, your story. But this is an opportunity to kind of change your story a little bit. Um, we're at the end of the year. So it's a great opportunity to showcase the impact you've made so far in 2022, um, what some exciting plans are for 2023, um, how uh, past donors, how their donations have um, impacted the community. Um, you really want to keep your story current because we all know that the economic climate is, is impacting us. So have rising prices affected your budget? Um, do you have any new needs um, in your community that have come up because we're in this post-COVID era? Um, like what, what's going on in your organization? 
put it in there, tell your story in a quick and efficient way. And, and um, this is a great opportunity to kind of switch it up a bit. And finally, you want to set up your EFT because let's be honest, we all just want to make sure we actually get the money that we raise. Okay, so first step is you want to customize your profile. Um, this is the main link you're so, you're, that you're going to share with your supporters. So um, this is where, this is the link. You copy and paste this URL and you share it on social media and you have it hyperlinked um, from different blogs and different places. And, and you add this to your emails telling people, okay, click here to donate to our cause as a whole. Um, so you want to really customize the look and the feel, and you can easily get there by going to your dashboard, and all admins have access to your dashboard, and just go to the organization page, click edit mode, and start editing it to kind of meet your Giving Tuesday needs. And then, as I was talking about before, this is the time to tell a powerful story of why your donors should give to your organization for Giving Tuesday. Um, not only do we like to tell a story here, but you also, the fun part about Giving Tuesday is you're adding a sense of urgency because it's Giving Tuesday. It's a 24-hour giving day. Um, and then you want to make it, obviously on our page, we have it easy that you have how to give. Um, but this is your opportunity to kind of tell people why they should give. Um, and, and, and make it just really um, simple and impactful. All right. You can also add or update your goal or progress bar. This is something that we think is really important. We're talking about a giving day. So it's almost like um, you should have a goal just for this day only. Um, so as much as you may, as an organization, want to raise let's say $50,000, you know, for the year, you want your, organiz your organization on this day, your goal might be $1,000. And you want to actually be able to see that throughout the day. That's part of the excitement of a, a day like Giving Tuesdays. You get to see that thermometer actually move. So now you have a, a place you can edit it. So you can edit your goal and progress bars by using the quick edit menu um, and then just clicking on the little pencil icon that you can see where it says edit goal. And then you just set your goal for Giving Tuesday campaign. If you've had good, um, Giving Tuesdays in the past, a good rule of thumb is just in, have an increased total amount um, for this year. And if you've never um, ever had a, a Giving Tuesday campaign to um goal, you can check with um, your team and you can come together with a goal, but a good first year goal for many small nonprofits is, is could just be $1,000. Um, you want to add a progress bar to your page and then all the metrics will automatically reset to start on the 15th. Um, when you register with our Giving Tuesday pay page. So uh, um, when early uh, donations open up, then everything will be able to, uh, all donations then made to your website will be added to that goal uh, progress bar that you added in there. All right. You want to optimize your checkout flow. A lot of people, they just think about the donation form when people are checking out, but you're, you have to kind of think about the entire experience of your donors. So you want to go to dashboard, then you click checkout, and then you click donation form. And then you can choose your suggested donation amounts thoughtfully and tie them back to your Giving Tuesday campaign. So sometimes people will put... Uh, give $20.22 in honor of the 2022 Giving Day campaign, or, um, and, or they make um, all of the donations um, smaller amounts possibly than you normally have because 
in all honesty, you don't want to have somebody donating $5,000 online. Um, and, and this is a great opportunity to um, put some maybe smaller totals. You might want to focus on monthly donations from some of your donors. So you want to you know, make sure that you put information about monthly donations on your page. Um, and then, of course, you can always um, add impact statements to each of your donor descriptions. And so that way you're saying, okay, $50 will buy backpacks for our readathon um, classroom, or, or you know, $100 will buy um, costumes for, for um, all of each cast member of Sound of Music. I don't know, but whatever you can think of, you can definitely come up with um, um, ways that you can add descriptions to each of your donations amount. Make your descriptions though clear and to the point. This is not the place to write a dissertation about where the money goes. This is a place where you can just write it something quick, easy, and, um, and something that will make them wanna actually click that, that button and that amount. Um, then um, when you do all of that, you always um, you want to make sure that you preview the checkout process. Go through the entire experience to see what your donors are going to be going through. So you want to make sure that the, the, it's a quick and easy process. They aren't checking off way too many plate, um, fields. Um, there, I, there's definite studies out there that say the more fields that you add, um, the more opportunity you can lose a donor. And so you definitely want to make sure that it's quick, su succinct, and it's getting you the information that you need at your organization. You also want to make sure that you take a look at the thank you page and at your donation receipts and um, make sure that, that um, they're clear, they're to the point they um, have giving Tuesday information in there. Um, then, and, and, um, and that, that they're just meeting your actual needs for the day of. Um, your thank you page. You wanna go in, when you go into your thank you page, you wanna go to the dashboard, checkout and thank you page. Um, and then it's a simple inline editor. So, um, so this is what comes up after you make a donation. Um, when you do this, you can embed a video and I know a lot of people think that they're like, well, we don't have a videographer and we don't have all this fancy stuff. We all right now have um, a, a great little camera on our phones. <laughs> and a lot of times these thank you videos, they can be, you can get them at an event and just have everybody at an event screaming, thank you. Um, having kids in a classroom screaming, thank you. It's just a way to kind of thank people in a simple way and, and make them realize the impact they're making with their donation. Um, you can also, um, by um, making the edits to your thank you for donating page, you um this is the fastest way to show your gratitude, basically, because this is an autoresponder. This is a minute you hit your you hit donate, you're getting this is the first thing that they're going to see. So just acknowledge that. Um, just think about that when you're um, putting your message together. And then this is a big one. Make sure you click save. <laughs> I, I don't know how many times. I have gone in and made edits to something and I don't click save and then I have to go and rewrite it again. Um, we've all been there. We've all done it. And we want to make sure that you guys uh, don't learn from my mistakes and click save. Um, so not only do people get a thank you message um, after they donate, but they also get an email receipt. Um, and so you can edit that receipt that they get by clicking dashboard, check out donation receipt. Um, you can add a message from your nonprofit. You can um, automate the, the, this um, by using the receipts. You're instantly automating the donor acknowledgement. So once again, you make a donate, you get the thank you page and bam, you're already getting the donation receipt in your mailbox. Um, receipts should be concise, but this is also a great opportunity, especially for Giving Tuesday, to give 
some post donations calls to actions. So what that means are things like, hey, thank you so much for your gift. You know how else you can help us? You can share this um, that you donated on social media. You can challenge five friends to donate. You can, um, we have these great volunteer opportunities coming up in, um, in December. You come back and volunteer with our organization. You have so many opportunities to get new donors to become more involved in your organization and help raise your money on a uh, for year-end giving. So take that opportunity to make sure that you edit your donation receipt to meet that those Giving Tuesday possible needs. Um, and then this is an opportunity also. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of putting a, you know, a lengthy dissertation in a receipt, but I do love the opportunity to be able to, to hyperlink and click on a place where I can see, okay, tell me more about your organization. Tell me more about the impact of my donation. Tell me more about your accomplishments. You don't need to do it in the receipt itself you have plenty of opportunities to do it just by um, letting them click on links and explore on their own. And once again, make sure you click save. All right. So another thing that we want to make sure that all of you do is review your nonprofit's settings. So all of the admins will need access to your profile, you want to make sure that everybody who you want to be an admin it has access. <laughs> so make sure that they're added. Make sure that that everybody has access to all of the tools they need, and make sure you create a, a backup plan. If something goes wrong, um, um, you want to make sure that you are not the only one. You are not the only keeper of the keys, that there's possibly somebody else that can help you out and just is an admin as well. You want to make sure your URL is customized and then go in, cut and paste that URL in different browsers. You want to see what they're seeing. And um, sometimes when we, we as admins, we kind of get into the nuts and bolts too much that we kind of forget about the actual donor process. So um, make sure that your URLs are working. Um, discoverability, make sure that it is turned on. <laughs> it helps um, for people to, they'll be able to search for your organization and find you and make donations. Um, social sharing options are customized and optimized. Make sure that you have, um, like when you are going through your donor experience, click on every single place where there's a possible link. Make sure that every single place is working and it's showing um, your organization the best way that it can. Um, make sure your EFT is set up because what's the use of raising money on um, on Giving Tuesday if you don't get the money. So um, make sure your EFT is set up because that's the easiest way to get some money from your money uh, dispersed to you. Um, and make sure your legal address and legal information is up to date. Um, so that way, um, all of our information, we all are sharing the exact same information at all times. All right. Are you a returning organization? Is this your 10th? I think um, the Giving Tuesday started in 2012. So this would be the 10th Giving Tuesday. So is this your 10th Giving Tuesday? Well, if it is, you should be focusing on retention. So you can check your retention rate on your overview page or your retention reports. And um, you and and we we really do believe that you should develop a specific plan for donors who have given before to make sure that they give sometime between Giving Tuesday and the end of this year. So just look at last year's donors and have a whole plan set up for those people. I'm going to tell you a personal story. I know um, I just recently helped out an organization, 
and uh, they wanted to get new donors. That was really important to the board that they get new donors. And they put, sent out this mailing and I don't know, it was sent out to like 2000 people. It's a very small organization, but they, their board worked hard. They got 2000 emails out. I told them that they should really be focusing on retaining their old donors as well. We had a plan. They said they want to send a, a mailing in September. And then I said in December, I would like to send another mailing to anybody who got that mailing and still hasn't donated. And they were like, no, 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 don't do that. So I said, how about this? I'm going to cherry pick. Thirty people end up. These people didn't to the causal. I want to make sure that you have that. Um, you you are able to. Um, you're creating your retention plan you just want to make sure that you give them an opportunity you make sure you're contacting them oh, excuse me i'm sorry i'm seeing people are raising their hands and so now i'm concerned Hopefully you guys can hear me better. Um, I've, I've got some complaints that I went out for a bit. So, so hopefully um, you guys can hear me better. And hopefully um, um, I will be answering a bunch of these questions at the end of the session. That way we can just kind of keep plugging along. But if you guys hear any um, more, if I do start to break up, um, just let me know again, raise your hands and I'll make sure I check out the Q&A. Okay, thanks. Um, and um, and you, it's easy to track retention throughout the early giving um, for a little more targeted follow-up. So once again, you can easily run your retention reports um, from your uh, dashboard. And then um, if you've done this before, and that's the key, <laughs> and then and then you make sure that you you really work on uh, retaining those donors, um, not just for Giving Tuesday, but for your entire end of year um, of giving. One question that just keeps popping up, so I just want to ease everybody's peace of mind, <laughs> give you guys peace of mind. Uh, I am recording this, and you will get the, um, the slides of this pre presentation um added um and sent to you um after uh we give the pre the presentation is over okay all right so let's move on and sorry for i don't know bad internet connection maybe but hopefully you guys can hear me now all right step three of our of our six steps is use uh, the mighty cause resources so we have a very robust toolkit that is available to you. And um, these the tools that we have available, if you are brand new um, to um, do, uh, planning Giving Tuesday campaigns, we have tons of people who have tons of experience who have put together um, some great um, um, basics, ways that you can use Mighty Cause, uh, ways that you can use best practices, um, some easy marketing and social media toolkits. Um, we have all sorts of things. And it's not just for um, for you, the nonprofit, but we also have like fundraiser toolkits. So if you're doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, it's something that you can send to your board members or your key stakeholders that are doing fundraising for you for Giving Tuesday. So um, make sure that you're using um, all of the resources that we have available to you and all of them are easily accessible at givingtuesday.mightycause.com. And then you just click on resources and you can look at the nonprofit toolkit or any of the other resources. All right, so we have 
Uh, in our toolkit, we have case studies. I, I just went through all of this, but we have case studies um, that are from successful nonprofits. So like I said, we have tons of people who have been doing this for a while. Why not, if you're gonna steal, steal from the best. <laughs> so we're making sure that we gave you some uh, case studies of successful nonprofits. We have planning guides, we have email templates, we have social media guides, we have graphics that you can use. Um, and all sorts of, uh, of different logos and media graphics. And one thing that I, I swear by, I don't know what I did <laughs> before it was created, but if you are, don't have a Canva account, and that's canva.com, um, all nonprofits um, get some, to use uh, their tools, their um, uh, graphic design tools for free. But if you aren't using it, get on that right away. And I'll make sure I share this at the end as well. Um, it makes it super easy. As I mentioned to you that you need to have a logo and a banner um, on your website. You can make sure that your, your banners um, are meeting the size requirements. Your logos look really great and they fit those size requirements. And all you have to do is pump, uh, type in the size requirements in Canva and design it. You can use any upload any of our logos and instantly add a Giving Tuesday logo to a great picture that you have that's showing impact. Um, so there's all sorts of great ways that you can create your own personal toolkit by using the tools that we are providing for you. All right. If you're new to this, if you're old to this, if you pass trainings, we have tons of recordings. We have recordings that are going on and, and webinars that are going on live, but we also have tons of recording from the past. Um, if you're new, use the resources and listen to as many recordings as you possibly can. If you're old, I love, I still listen to recordings all the time. And nowadays with things being available to me on YouTube, I treat them like I would a podcast or, um, or uh, an audio book. You know, if I'm sitting around and I need a little company <laughs> as I'm working, I can put on a YouTube video and who knows, um, something might inspire you. So make sure that you're viewing our uh, past webinars. Our next webinar is going to be about thanking your Giving Tuesday donors. And so that is on December 1st. So make sure you register for that. And then, um, like I said, you can watch any of them at your convenience for free. All right, start scheduling your content now. Um, what I love is I, throughout my life, I will come in and I'll be like, so what, what do you guys do for Giving Tuesday? And they're like, we tried that once and we didn't make any money. It didn't work. And I'm like, well, what did you do? And they're like, well, we, we had our website site up and we, we sent, we, we did a, a social media post. I'm like, okay, interesting. <laughs> um, what you need to do is you, it, it, Giving Tuesday is not like the field of dreams. It's not if you build the website, people will come and throw money at you. You have to kind of work for it. Make sure you market your Giving Tuesday, your um, give, Giving Tuesday page and make sure that they, they're aware of you. So um, what's great about Giving Tuesday is there's tons of national advertising going on about the day. And then it's your responsibility to get people to come to your page. So trust me, just watch every morning talk show that morning. And they're all, I, I guarantee if you have your TV on for 15 minutes, you will hear about Giving Tuesday because that's what the news is going to cover all the morning talk shows. It's a big deal. Um, now you want people to come to your page. So you don't have to do everything the day of the event. You can set up. Um, a schedule. You can set up, you should tell people Giving Tuesday is coming up, prepare them for the day. Then on the day of, you should be able to segment audiences and send and schedule an email that will send the day of. So you're not sitting there, you know, typing um, a, a, a email right there on the day of, you can do all of this ahead of time. So just, uh, we have some templates available for you um, just for 
inspiration. You don't have to use them word for word, but I know I'm a big person that if you, I just get that first line written for me, I can kind of do the rest. So we have a lot of templates available for you for inspiration. You can segment your list. So you hit those key audiences. For example, you returning donors, you should be treating differently than people who've never donated before, but you think should be donating. Um, key volunteers, board members, um, all of that. Segment your audience and, and, um, and it should definitely inspire different ways of giving. Um, you wanna include Giving Tuesday in your routine emails. From now on, if you have an e newsletter that goes out, you can have like a little, I always say, put a little advertisement or a little save the date about uh, Giving Tuesday or year-end giving or calls to action on how they can give or whatever you can. But from now on, all of your, from now until the end of the year, you should really be working on uh, making sure that all, all almost all e-newsletter type emails um, include a little information about Giving Tuesday. And then as always, test your emails before sending. And the number one thing is I know a lot of people who are really great at test when they get an email, they test the grammar and they look at the grammar and then they never click on any of the links. And then of course, the minute you send it out to thousands of people, you realize that link is broken or it's not going to the right place. So testing your email means clicking on every link, making sure it goes to the right place as well. Social media. Um, we have a social media guide for in-depth social media strategy and best practices. Um, it Also, we have uh, a toolkit that can help you with graphics. And once again, canva.com. I can't, I, I know I shouldn't be selling them so much, but they really are a great resource for um, making some, some great images really quickly and easily. Um, I've always um, said that I've, you know, we all have some great pictures that tell a story. And if you can just put slap your logo on there or slap a Giving Tuesday logo on that that picture, it adds so much um, and, and it tells such a great story in your social media. Um, schedule as much as you can in advance. Now, this is important. Um, the There are things that you're going to want to make sure you do with your social media. You should be telling your story. You should be telling people how um, how a donation will impact your organization. You should tell, uh, you should be telling people how to give. Like there's some basics like, hey, today is Giving Tuesday. Um, in the next 24 hours, we wanna raise our goal and, and that's going to support, insert our mission. And um, you can impact, you can make an impact by whatever your call to action is, including the link that they're gonna click in order to donate. And then you, you're like, and to add a sense of urgency, we will, and obviously you don't write to add a sense of urgency, <laughs> but um, then you can kind of say, we have a matching gift. So every single donation made before noon is going to, to uh, be doubled. You, this is now an opportunity to double your donation. Um, you can create, a lot of those emails and um, social media tools uh, before the event even starts. And then on the day of your event, it's fun to kind of, that's when you can kind of add to it and say, hey, we're $100 from this goal, or we um, we had a goal of raising, getting 24 donors before noon, and we just need three more donors, or, you know, you can create another sense of urgency the day of, but it shouldn't be the meat of your con, your, um, your social media content. All right. Um, and I think we just uh, did that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's set up your day of plan. All right. So your day of management, if you can, and trust, I get it. I have been the only person at the nonprofit. <laughs> so if you can, use find some somebody that could possibly help you out, whether it's an intern, 
a board member, a key volunteer, somebody, but if you can get the help, it helps to delegate and it can be a really, it can be simple delegation. It can be like, I want to make, you are in charge of anything that gets put on Instagram and you are in charge and I scheduled it. You just make sure that these three things go out, out you know, at when, um, when it, they're supposed to go out. Um, just having those extra eyes and having those people that are in charge of small but manageable steps is definitely going to help you out. So have a point person uh, for social media, for donor questions. If people are having issues making a donation, well, then you're not going to be getting that donation. So make sure you have it. So if somebody, if something's going wrong and people are unable to donate, you aren't the person, the key person, and you aren't the person stuck in a three-hour meeting and nobody is be able to donate for three hours. You have to make sure that um, everything is handled. Um, and then you just uh, kind of make sure you're monitoring the donations. And, and like I said, make it um, exciting. Check, you know, run reports um, throughout the day, check for goals, check for opportunities. Okay, we could really make more money. Maybe I'll send out another social media post right now. Maybe I can send out a quick email um, and, and we can hit a whole new goal uh, before six o'clock at night. You know, there's all sorts of things that you'll quickly learn and you'll get a, to be a part of the excitement of Giving Day um, or Giving Tuesday. And then you're going to want to. Um, you want to make sure that you take advantage of that. And as I said, if you're short staffed, ask a volunteer to help out. There's lots of volunteers that can do this. And I'm a great example. I have helped many new nonprofits. That's been my board job is to help nonprofits just with Giving Tuesday. And I'm happy to do it. And I know that there's other people just like me out there. Okay, some day of tips. Create and celebrate milestones. Um, this is something that I have learned. <laughs> and so if you're a smaller nonprofit out there, this is uh, definitely something I recommend. If you want to raise a thousand dollars or more, create a challenge to get 24 donors in 24 hours. I do not understand. It. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no way that the math works out that 24 donors will equal a thousand dollars but a, every organization i've ever worked at it's been a huge percentage if i if i take out all of the events or all the fundraisers that um we asked for 20 that got 24 or more donors um it's usually within like 95 percent of them raised more than a thousand dollars and so I don't know what it is, but something also is very manageable um, and it's a little easier sounding and kind of a fun thing to kind of, you know, challenge your board and and tell them to help us get 24 donors um, in 24 hours. I can't tell you how many times I'll see um, Giving Tuesday pages and they have zero donors. And that frustrates me to no end because I'm like, you mean you're board can't give ten dollars each <laughs> you mean that, that you you know you don't have key volunteers or key stakeholders or or you know it just and 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 so sometimes rather than thinking like okay we really want to uh, hit a monetary goal that um just giving challenging them to ask 24 of their friends or and and make it grow that way is a great way to go um and then you want to, as I said before, create social media posts um, for when you hit certain monetary milestones. That way, if let's say that you had a, your goal for the day is 10,000 bucks, every time you make $1,000 throughout the day, like, hey, we got we got 1,000, 9,000 to go. <laughs> we, you know, just kind of keep keep hitting those milestones and it adds that sense of fun and people get excited and they wanna make sure that they see um, if you actually meet the complete goal. Keep your eyes on the prize, understand when your power hours begin and end to ensure that you have posts and email schedules going out and uh, make sure that you, um, you, you have challenges going on throughout the day. Um, and then look for opportunities to engage online. It's kind of funny 
um, doing giving days, the, the weird things that I've seen people do and they've taken advantage of. I remember somebody had a giving day once and it was the day um, of uh, Harry, Prince Harry's wedding. <laughs> or no, the baby was born. And, 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 um, and they were just like, oh, you know, they made kind of a joke about that, because that was going on live. And they made a joke that, that um, as a shower gift, you should donate to our organization. Um, and, and I've seen lots of things where they've taken advantage of something that's newsworthy or something that's funny that's going on online. And they've um, used that to engage on Giving Tuesday. And you can definitely do that too. Okay, plan to follow up. So why should you follow up with your organizations? Well, a quick and sincere follow up um, from nonprofits increases the odds that donors will make a future gift. It's, it's, I think uh, everybody knows if you, if people like a thank you note, and if it's quick and easy and succinct, um, and people, if you thank your donors, they're more likely to give. Um, one thing that's really interesting, and this is definitely something you can look at if you have MailChimp or Constant Contact or any of those email solutions uh, platforms, just look at your emails and the, how many ones get read. And I can guarantee you, if they say thank you in the subject line, it's they're one of your better your the the percentage of readability is higher. Uh, and and I once again, it's one of those things. I don't know the rhyme or reason, but people like to read thank you notes. So, um, so make sure you thank the people, and 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 it's an opportunity to get your mission and your impact out there um, in a email that's actually being read. Um, tag thank you messages on social media, inspire more gifts. This is something definitely if you guys are having any peer to peer fundraising. Um, this is something that your individual fundraisers, your board members, your uh, key stakeholders can definitely do to their friends and say, hey, Jen, thank you so much. And you tag Jen. Thank you so much for your gift to Big Sisters. Um, um, I really appreciate it. The reason why it's so important to kind of do that on social media is not only is it a really nice, friendly, sweet thing to do, but also if you um, if you sent out a letter, let's say to a bunch of your friends, and they see that they'll, they're, it's going to pop up, the algorithm is going to make that thank you pop up because you thank somebody else in your friend group, and that might trigger them to donate to your organization. <laughs> so. Um, so it's a great way to, um, I, it's always funny to me when I do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, every time I thank somebody um, on social media, um, I'll get another, I'll, somebody will donate, the, it will trigger somebody, they're like, oh, that's right, I was going to do that. Um, and so it's an easy way to do it, and thank your friends. It's a great way to close the loop on your campaign. Um, and it keeps your donors engaged. Uh, you thank yous don't have to just say thank you. That's a great way to showcase. Um, you can give them a year round of how their donation made an impact. You can give them um, a year of showing what you did. This is your opportunity to brag about what you did in 2022 and what your plans are for 2023. And all of that is a way to keep your donors engaged. And it's a time to start laying the groundwork for uh, your year-end fundraising efforts. All right. Um, you want to start stewarding your donors, too. You want to welcome your new donors. Get them and uh, try to create welcome series, welcome packets. Get them involved in your organizations to see how... how um, how much that that one time donation could end up mean being uh, leading to volunteer work. It could lead to um, just getting more involved in your organization. You want to reach out to all of your sustaining supporters, and um, and then you also want to make sure that you, um, if you got a large donation or a, a new matching gift, you have an opportunity to thank those people. See how they can tell them how um, 
Giving Tuesday went and and see um, it, how would they like to do things and uh, support your organization in the future. Okay, and this is, <laughs> this is, I get this one all the time. What is the least thing that we can do in order to fundraise? I'm super busy. I don't have time to add one more thing to my plate. Here we go. Um, make sure you scan your existing Mighty Cause page. Make sure that you have updated all of your information. You don't want to send out a page that has 2021 written in <laughs> in some place, or it's talking about dates that don't exist and, um, in 2022. You want to make sure that everything's up to date. Two, schedule at least two social media posts with a link to your profile on November 29th. Schedule them as soon as possible and, and they should just automatically go on. That way, if you don't have a have time the day that day, you at least have social media, two posts that are gonna be going out there. Um, and send at least one email blast to your subscribers. I recommend sending multiple emails throughout the day but at least send one that tells them this is how you can donate. This is how you can be a part of our, our, our Giving Tuesday campaign. And that way it's not just the, like I said, if you build that website, people will automatically come. You are doing some real marketing and outreach to try to bring those people in. Um, our next webinar is thanking your Giving Tuesday donors. So join us on Thursday, December 1st for our next webinar. Um, and you can learn how to acknowledge those donors in even more. Uh, register on givingtuesday.mightycause.com. And now I see I have a lot of questions. <laughs> so let's open up the floor for questions. All right, hold on one second. All right. Um, okay, so I am signed up. Uh, oh, what is the design software that you mentioned? Oh, I think I mentioned canva.com. Um, that's C-A-N-V-A dot C-O-M. Um, and then another place that you might want to get um, some of the Giving Tuesday logos, if you like those hearts that you see, that you can also check out givingtuesday.org. Um, and then, of course, our Giving Tuesday page here at Muddy Cause. But givingtuesday.org also has some logos and, and tools available for you as well. Um, um, okay, I have somebody here asking about, um, um, basically asking, saying that they don't really use some of their social media and what should they focus on <laughs> for social media. This one's kind of, look, I'm a firm believer if, don't just bust out Instagram if you don't use Instagram, <laughs> just because you want to use Instagram for, um, for uh, Giving Tuesday. Um, you know, you, you check out the demo, the demographics of your donors and where your audience is. And if you have to focus just on one social media platform, just looking at those demographics, you're going to figure out which one works best. Um, and, and there, and, and to be honest with you, if it's Facebook, that's fine. If it's Instagram, that's fine. If it's Twitter, that's fine. Um, if you do want to use all of them. There's definitely um, places like Hootsuite, um, and I'll type that in, that can help you um, schedule multiple posts. I'm not that great of a fan of those, but it is a way that you can uh, post to multiple places um, at once. But I really recommend that you um, hone in on your demographics to figure out uh, what works for your organization now and um, and just stick with what works for this Giving Tuesday. And then throughout 2013, you can work on building an audience um, with your a new um, a new social media platform. Um, is there a cost for Mighty Cause? No, nope, it's free. <laughs> um, we have transaction free fees um, for each 
donor. Um, and then um, we do have some adva an advanced platform um, for like if you want an embeddable form, if you uh, branded receipts, text to give, so on and so forth. And if you're interested in any of that, you can definitely uh, request a demo um, on our Mighty Cause website. And we will be happy to talk to you about um, making sure that you have all of those bells and whistles um, in time for Giving Tuesday. Um, once again, will these um, will the slide and video be available to us? Yes, we're going to be sending out these slides and this video to um, everybody. It's being recorded right now, so you get to hear me ramble on, but it will all be available to you. Um, what should each post include um, when posting on, on social media? Um, once again, I'm a big thing, how to give. Make sure you have your, your URL available there. Why to give. Make sure you're including um, your how you can impact the community. It, um, just the idea of Giving Tuesday being 24 hours adds a sense of urgency. But if you can add a sense of urgency, like if um, by getting a matching gift, that is even better because um, you can always say, um, if you donate before noon, all donations um, are doubled, you know, and it makes people donate early and, and, uh, and that will definitely help. Um, all right. I'm just going through a little bit more. Sorry. Um, some of these are um, very, um, uh, more one-on-one -on -one statements. So I'm going to answer some of them afterwards and I'll type it, I'll stay on after I close this and I'll, I'll type in some responses, but um, I'm trying to get, think of anything that would be great for the groups who hear. Um, like, like people have asked questions about fees um, and I can definitely send you information about what goes to the fees. What I can tell you is, um, so um, when you are asked, when you're a donor and you're asked to donate, donors will be asked whether they would like to cover a transaction fee. And on average, more than 90% of our donors agree to cover that transaction fee. And for every single time they cover the transaction fee, the nonprofit gets 100% of the donation. So uh, uh, a big percentage, it's kind of based on um, whether your donors will cover that fee or not, but they're across the board. Um, we have learned at Mighty Cause that, like I said, over 90% of the donors um, tend to pay for that transaction fee. So you, you will be able to see that. And when you um, run your reports, you'll be able to see how much was taken out of fees before um, your donation was dispersed to you. Um, Um, what if you have more than one donor willing to offer a, a challenge grant? <laughs> um, okay, now you're just bragging. But, <laughs> but if you are, a great opportunity is it, it's kind of up to you, but you can, um, you can definitely have different challenges. Um, have a challenge where it's, um, okay, if you donate by, everybody who donates by noon, um, is it, it will get a match up to three thousand dollars. Okay, and now we're going to do our our nighttime push. And <laughs> everybody who donates from six p.m. to midnight can um, can get a match. Um, you know, you can always add that excitement to it and you can always discuss it with the um the donors to see like like kind of brainstorm ideas on ways that you can um um use your challenge grants um to to keep the excitement going for all 24 hours of your giving day um what is the advantage of 
of registering with Mighty Cause, you're you're part of our platform. Um, if if you register with us, you get to use our tools. Um, and if you um, where um, where is if you just register with Giving Tuesday um, dot org, you you don't you're not given an actual um, platform and a way to donate as easily. And for so many of you, you already have a donor page. You already did a lot of your legwork because you are coming in because you've used, you've tested our site, you've used our site, you've had it for a giving, um, a giving day. And so it's already there. And, and, um, that's a tremendous benefit because it's a tremendous site, uh, time saver. Um, there's a, a lot of here about is there any resources for newbies or rookies on setting up their site? You can definitely, um, it, it, like I've given the link to uh, givingtuesday.mightycause.com. Um, that is definitely available for you there. Let me see here. I'm just going to try to, <laughs> I'm not the best with the, the Zoom yet. Um, so give me one second and I'm going to show you if you go to mightycause.com. Okay, hopefully you can see I'm adding the, um, that to my screen. But if you go to mightycause.com, we have a tremendous resources section. So this, is, um, this isn't this is even just about Giving Tuesday. Now this is just about our tools and resources. So we have our resources, we have our, our we have blogs, e-library, support centers, fundraising ideas, case studies, all of this. And this is all available for, um, for you. And then I always like to point this out to people because when you are in the resource, so if you are the admin and you are in the resource, there is a little circle at the, at the lower right-hand side that has a question mark. And if you click on it, it's going to come up with the most popular questions based on this page. But then it has a place where you can contact our support staff if you need any help or you're, you're really struggling to do things. I, the site is incredibly intuitive, but I get it when you're in there and if you're stressed out and you're brand new, you might have questions, but there are tons of resources that basically tell you how to do what you want to do. And if you, if that, if all else fails, you can always contact our support center. <laughs> 